Okay, now continuing with uh, solving systems using augmented matrices, and again we're dealing with smaller systems in this video, our goal is to actually use those uh, row operations I showed you in the previous video to be able to take a matrix like this, an augmented matrix of this form, and actually transform it to an augmented matrix like this, where we have just a 1 for the uh, top left value, and then a 0 for everything else in the row except for the constant, and then go down to the second row and go to the second element and have a 1 there and a 0 here, and then the constant and because if we can transform this matrix into this form then we can now write this augmented matrix as a system of equations and see that it simply tells us that 1x plus 0y equals 3 for the first row 1x plus 0y equals 3 and the second row simply says 0x plus 1y equals 2 well in short, that just tells us that x is 3 and y equals 2. So in other words, it gives us the answer if we can get it in this form. Now, our goal, if it was a larger system, would be to do something similar. So if we had a 3 equation by a 3 unknown system, we would want to get the left side of the augmented line to be 1, 0, 0 for the first row. 0, 1, 0 for the second row, 0, 0, 1 for the third row, and then whatever these constants turned out to be, that would be your solution because this would just simply be 1x equals 2, this would be 1y equals 3, and this would be 1z equals 1. So x would equal 2, y would equal 3, and z equals 1. Now, these two, these two systems here, this one here and this here, or I should say these two augmented matrices, these matrices are actually in what we call reduced row echelon form, or RREF for short. So once we get an augmented matrix in that form, then we can identify the solutions or determine if it has no solution. So to get a matrix in that form, there's a few things that have to be satisfied. First of all, if you have any row of all zeros, they must be on the last row. Like, for instance, on this one, notice I put the row of zeros is on the last row. Uh, the first non-zero element in each row must be a leading one. So if you look in this one, the first non-zero element in each row is a one. Same thing here. Same thing here. And of course, same thing here. And again, the first non-zero element in each row is a 1. And then all other elements above or below the leaning ones must be 0. So if you look at this one, notice everything below it is a 0. If you look at this one, everything above it or below it is a 0. And if you look at this one, everything above it is a 0. And you'll notice the same thing here. The number below this one is a 0. The number above this one is a 0. The number below this one is a zero. The number above this one and below this one is a zero, and so on. And then all other elements uh, above or below the leading one must be a zero. Oh, I just said that, didn't I? So, and then the last thing is a leading one below a row must be to the right. That That's a typo, I guess. I should fix that. But that should be to the right. So a leading one below should be to the right. So notice how the ones below this one is to the right of it and the one below this one is to the right of it. Same here, if you go below this one, the one is to the right of it. Here, the one is to the right of it and so forth. So those are the things that you do. Well, actually, if you do these, if you do the steps right it, that I tell you to do, you don't really have to worry about all of these happening. They will happen if you just follow the proper steps. So the steps here, the first thing you want to do is get a 1 in the first, the, the first row, first column entry. So if I was going to work with, say I was going to try to solve this system, the first goal would be to get a 1 right here. Okay, or in this one, I would need a 1 right here. Now this one I wouldn't have to worry about it because there's already a 1 there. All right, 
Then after we get the one, we need to multiply that row by a constant and add it to another row to cancel all elements that are above or below the one. So here, we, after we make this a one, we would need to multiply this row by something and add it to this row to cancel the number that's below it. So we'd have to turn this into a zero. And for this one, we would have to uh, multiply this row by whatever number we could so that we add it to this row to cancel the two. And then we would do another operation, add it to this row to cancel the one. And that'll be clearer once you actually see me do this. Okay, then we would move to the next row and make the no first non-zero element a one in that and then repeat the process. So after I made this a one and this a zero, then I would drop down to the next row and I would make this a one and then I would use the one to eliminate this. Or down here, I would now drop down and make this be a one and use row operations to eliminate the number that's above it and below it. And then uh, finally, I, after I did that, then I would move down here to this one and make this a one and eliminate the two numbers above it. So you'll see this. Uh, in the example that I do here because we're only going to do small examples on this one. Okay, now let me just tell you on uh, these two problems, I actually um, I duplicate augmented matrices in these steps so that you can actually see what you get when you go from one matrix to another. But in practical applications, you don't really have to duplicate the matrices like I do when I do these steps. So first of all, how would we write this in augmented form? Well, I've already shown you that. The first row would be 2, 1, which are the coefficients, and then 8, the constant. In the second row, the coefficients are 1 and 3, and the constant's 9. So let's copy this row down here, and this is what I was talking about. You actually could start here, but I'm going to copy it down here and then start with my row operations. So there's two ways I could make, a, make this be a 1. I could just multiply everything in this row by a half, uh, and and then that would make that a 1. But another thing I can do, if there's a 1 available below it, I can swap the rows. So if I swap row 1 with row 2, then that would give me the second row would now move to the first row, 1, 3, 9, and the first row moves to the second row. Well, now that gives me a 1 right there, and that's the first thing you want to do is to get a 1 in that first row, first column entry. Okay, so I went ahead and just copied this down here in the next step, which of course you don't have to copy it. You can just go into the next step, but I copied it down here. Now, I'm gonna keep this circled because that's actually what I'm gonna use to eliminate the two. Now, what you have to do is you just have to ask yourself, what do I have to add to two to cancel it? And obviously to cancel the two, you'd have to add negative two. So the way I could make this a negative 2 is multiply this row by negative 2. So take negative 2 times row 1 and add it to row 2. Now we're not changing row 1, we're only changing row 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply row 1 by negative 2. So if I do that, I'll do that on scratch paper. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 and 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. And then I'm going to add those values to these values in row 2. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0, so I'm going to put a 0 right here in row 2. And then negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5, so I'll put a negative 5 right there. And then negative 18 plus 8 is negative 10, so I'll put a negative 10 right there. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and just copy this matrix again down here. And you can see that I've got the 1 here and the 0 here, and that was my goal. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to go down to the first, the second row and find the first non-zero value here, and I need to make that be a 1, okay? Well, now, to make this a 1, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this row by the reciprocal of negative 5. The reciprocal of negative 5 is negative 1 fifth. So I need to multiply everything in this row by negative one-fifth because that's a legal row operation. So with zero times negative one-fifth would give me zero. Negative five times negative one-fifth gives me the one. That's why I wanted it. And negative ten times negative one-fifth gives me a positive two. 
Okay, let's copy this down into the down here. So now, now that I've got the one there, I've got to say, okay, what do I need to multiply this by so that I can add it to the three to cancel it? Because now I've got to get rid of this three. Well, if you multiply one by negative three, that would give you a negative three, and then you could add that to row one to cancel it. So I'm going to do negative three times row two and add it to row one. So now if I multiply everything by negative three, zero times negative three would be zero. Negative, oh, positive one times negative three is negative three, and two times negative three is negative six. And now all I have to do is just add those values. Zero plus one is going to give me one. Negative three plus three is going to give me zero. And negative six plus nine is going to give me three. And now I've got this into the reduced row echelon form. And I can read the answer is x equal three and y equal two. And I'm done. And so that gives me the solution x equal three, y equal two. And I'll do the rest of the examples on the next video. So make sure you, you view the next video to see the uh, some more examples of this before you move on to the next section with larger systems.